got a full week of working, but this time we're going to do some questions and answers. Hi everybody, it is Wednesday, the 12th of July, and it's about quarter past five in the evening. I've done my run, and I'm just uh, parked up out in b &Q car park because I've had to go and pick up some flooring that I've been promising the wife to pick up all week. Never got a chance because it was too busy, and the fitter's coming tomorrow to put it down, so today was my last chance. And as luck would have it, I had to do a collection today, and it was a big collection. <laughs> it was three big pallets. I want to put them all on. I wasn't sure if I could fit them all on the van, and I thought I might not be able to go home tonight not if I don't pick these things up. But if you have a look, I've just about managed to squeeze them on the van at the end. So as you can see... Just about got them on, so my baking is now saved. So I'm going to get them home now. But not been much to report this week. I've been all week on my route, my multi-drop route. And I've been lucky. As I say, it's a well-paid route, so I'm milking it for as long as I can. And in fact, it's all gone pretty well, and all deliveries have been made. Apart from one day, which was yesterday, I couldn't do one delivery because the way to the place, the only road in, was blocked. And it was a legitimate reason, and they didn't mind, because they did send them this photo to prove it. So that van driver wasn't one of you lot out there. <laughs> but so, no, that's had to get delivered another day, that one. Uh, but these things happen, don't they? Accidents happen as well. As long as everyone walks away, Who's bothered? Now, there because there's not much subject matter to go on, I've decided that the rest of this video will be devoted to questions and answers because I have had questions through. Although I have answered them individually to the people, I think that some of the questions are worth airing. And also, the answers I give, there may be additional information or better information that you lot can offer as well. So please feel free to put your comments at the end, offering advice or picking apart my answers uh, so that we get the right solution for everybody. So Q&A to follow. Good afternoon, everybody. It is Thursday afternoon. It's three o'clock in the afternoon and I have finished my run. Uh, so this has given me an opportunity to deal with the questions that I was going to do. So what I've done is I've picked out questions that I've had recently. Um, I think almost all of these have been answered individually. But I thought I'll read out the questions because the answers that I give may not be as comprehensive as they could be. Uh, they may be slightly incorrect, which I hope they're not. And there may be additional information that you out there can add to help these people. And hopefully some of you will get something from these questions and answers. So the first ones are all pretty much related to what I'm doing at the moment. And because obviously these are later questions. So Paddy McGear is the first one I've selected. And he has put, can you not get a contract with that multi-drop company? Then maybe you'd save money on the CX. Uh, Paddy, no, I can't. They don't give contracts per se. You can become an approved contractor, which I am now, an approved contractor. And they use you, um, or me in this case, pretty much all of the time at the moment. So I am the only one, certainly at this site, who has an all-day gig. They do have other subcontractors coming in um, who may do half a day or might do three or four drops for them and uh, they do have a lot of um, subcontracted hgvs coming in as well and in fact they do use the courier exchange mainly for the big stuff you know the 18 tons and the seven and a half tons etc because uh, i've been in the office in the morning when they've been discussing the quotes they've had 
But no, you can't have a contract. And it was always touted as a temporary thing when I first started doing this. And I think that was in March. And since then, I've been almost constantly doing this. Apart from obviously having breaks when the van has been in for work or repair. Uh, and I've been on two holidays as well. But they've always had work for me when I've come back. So no, and you know, I don't think I would like a full-time contract with them because that, that gives a, a bit more commitment that I probably don't want to give. Delivery Man, who obviously is one of our latest new YouTubers. So if you feel the inclination to follow his channel, please do. Does the multi-drop feel like you are employed again? If not, why do why does it feel different than when you were employed? So it's a yes and a no. Um, obviously, when I do the multi-drop or the route, I'm doing it on behalf of them. And I do it to the best of my ability and in the way that they want me to do it. They don't mind me having my livery on my own van. They have got no issue with that whatsoever. Um. So that's quite good. So that means that I can keep me a little advertisement floating around the Greater Manchester area. So, no and yes. Yeah, yeah, you are technically feel like you're employed a bit, but I'm not an employee. I'm a self-employed contractor, but I do everything what they want me to do because obviously I want to stay in their good books and I want to do a good job for them because they'll keep using me. How is it different? from when I was employed well when I was employed I had a lot more responsibility so not only did I drive for the company that I I uh, worked for not a, as much as the other drivers but I still drove for them but I had other responsibilities because I was the operations manager so I was responsible for the day-to-day -day running making sure everything goes out making sure the vehicles are all okay so I don't have it all I've got to do when I come in in the morning here is to make sure that my load is correct, which technically I don't have to do as a self-employed courier, um, but I do it anyway. And uh, make sure I get the deliveries done. Uh, beyond that, I don't have any, I'm not, I've not got drivers mithering in me, I've not got customers mithering in me. I do sometimes get the odd phone call from the company who I do the work for, asking me, perhaps can I give them an ETA because I don't have a PDA like the other drivers, so I don't scan my paperwork once I've done it, which immediately goes back to the depot to tell them that delivery is done. So sometimes they might ring me to say, have you delivered to such a place yet? If not, what time do you expect to get there? And if you have, who signed for it? It does happen from time to time, but not very often. Zul Valor has put... How many drops are you doing a day on multi-drop? Right, okay. I call it multi-drop. It's not a proper multi-drop. It's not like a full fat multi-drop, like what the DPD guys or the Amazon guys do, where they're doing 60, 80 drops a day in a very condensed area, in and out, running round. This is a route. That this company have certain routes. They're all numbered. And I cover a route for them generally most of the time it's not always the same route but recently i've been doing mainly manchester itself and in that route they realize how many you're capable of doing a day they're not stupid so you'll have anywhere between 16 to 23 drops usually depending on how far you've got to travel um, if I said did the uh, High Peaks and Buxton, you wouldn't have as many drops because you've got a greater distance to cover. So, but on average, if you want to say between 16 to 23, um, and that's the kind of, it, but it takes all day mainly. Today's an exception. I got finished early, but I got lucky on some of the drops that they would have expected me to take longer over. Traffic was kind. And I got in and out a bit quicker than I normally would do. So I got away. So that's the kind of thing that you do. It's very, very manageable if you're efficient. If you don't mind working. 
Um, if an old, you know, fat boy like me can do it, you know, younger, more fit and energetic guys can do it. The only thing that I find is as I'm getting older, there is quite a bit of lifting involved because not everything's on pallets and some of the chemicals or liquid goods, they might be in boxes or they might be in the 25 litre containers. And if someone's got five or six of those, you've got to carry them out. And it can get quite tiring like that. But, I mean, I think that's just probably my age. And um, I don't mind it. You know, it, it helps the blood flow, keeps the heart pumping. But it does make me ache sometimes. Uh, I do feel it in the mornings, you know. Every morning I'm getting up now and it's like, oh, God, I've got to put them socks on because I've been lifting things the uh, day before. But I think somewhere it's doing me a bit of good because, you know, obviously I carry too much weight as it is. Um, this helps me exercise a little bit, doesn't it? I don't have a dog anymore, so I'm not hardly doing any walking. And so if when I was doing the same day long distance, I was getting zero to no nothing in exercise now, I'm pretty much active all day. So it can't be too bad a thing, can it? It just feels heavy. I'm getting older. Things just take, you know, the toll a bit more, don't they? Okay, so this name here has put user ET4E15INAQ. That's a strange name, that, for the old birth certificate. But anyway, what they've put is, can you start work on a foreign driving licence? Mine is Malawian and I can only use it for a year in the UK. So, and this is my opinion. Yes, I'm sure you can. If it's valid for a year in the UK, then there isn't any reason why you can't work on it. Um, you, we see lots of, you know, Eastern European guys, don't we, with the vans driving in the UK. So if if the government say you can drive for a year, in the UK and then maybe have to take a driving test. The only problem I think you may have is insurance. Because one of the questions they'll ask you is, have you got a full UK license? And some insurance companies may choose not to insure you. That might not be something that they do. But as to terms of driving, if it's legal to drive, then I'm sure you can, but you need insurance. Oh, uh, you need to be on someone's insurance if you're driving as a driver. But I don't think having the foreign license is a board is a barrier to working. It's just some insurance companies. I'm I, I, in the experience I've had with them, they may not like because at the end of the day, if you come from a country that's driving on the other side of the road, and then you come to this country, you've got no experience the day to day traffic over here. And then you start driving, doing deliveries. So you're driving all day. You know, I would imagine the risk is a little bit higher for them. But if anyone, you know, can correct me on that, then please, please feel free to. Now, okay, 7-K56RK. Are you a limited company or self-employed? You say you pay yourself... £12,000 a month tax-free. Is there any other exchanges other than the CX? There's a few questions in there. Are you limited or self-employed? I am a limited company. So I am a director of a limited company, which in my case is Anvil Logistics Limited. You could argue that's self-employed, but I'm running my own company, aren't I? And my company employs one person, and that is me. And I pay myself £12,000 per annum as a salary. So per annum. So divide that by 12. And the reason for that is simple, that I don't need to pay as much tax. Or any tax on that amount, to be honest with you. And then I supplement that income by paying myself dividends. Now, up until recently, I was paying myself the dividends every month. Um, but... My accountant and the subscriber as well advised me that that's not such a good idea because the government will see that way, that you're just dodging your way and topping up your salary, which, of course, I probably am. 
Uh, so you should pay those dividends less often, maybe every quarter. So now I've changed it so that when I do my VAT returns every quarter, I give myself a dividend then, uh, obviously based on what I want as a wage. So I've just recently paid my latest VAT bill. And when that money that, that was coming back to me from the VAT, I gave that to myself as a dividend. Now, I do pay tax on that, of course, but it's a lower rate than income tax. And I put all the money from my tax into another bank account ready for when it's time for me to divvy up to His Majesty. Is there any other exchanges than the CX or the Courier Exchange? Yes, there is. Um, I can name you two off the top of my head. There's the delivery app, which is free. I, do, I did have it at one point, um, but when my documents ran out with it, I never bothered doing it again. Uh, I only ever did one job on it. Because it's free, you tend to find that the prices are a little bit lower. And there's the same day courier network as well, which is a bit like the CX, except crapper. Um, I subscribed to that for a while. I did the monthly one. I did it for five months to give it a chance. I didn't do a single job on it. I did bid for a few on it. I never, ever was successful. And I just cancelled the subscription. They did get back onto me, offer me deals to stay. But there's absolutely zero point in staying on it um, because I didn't earn any money on it. So um, those are two. Um, there's others, isn't there? Shipley. And some of the other shippers have their own apps as well. I think you can go on to quite a few of the shippers have their own apps. I, I'd not, I'm not on any. But I'm sure people, if they would be so kind, in the comments would um, perhaps list the different ones that they might use and how they think it is. User BN4LRSQ1C. What happens to proper names? What would you do different if you started afresh now? So, if this was like going back 12 months and I could take time back, what would I do different? I wouldn't totally rely on the CX. I would network the hell out of everything. I would make it a mission to contact local shippers, to contact and build relationships with existing shippers, I wouldn't want to rely totally on the courier exchange. Now, I did initially, and I did make a living, but it wasn't easy. And nowadays, it's even harder. This time last year, the courier exchange was quite busy, and I did okay. Now, it doesn't seem anything... I don't even think it's recovered much from, like, January. So I would network the hell out of everything i would get my name known to all the local companies i would build as many relationships as i could as quickly as i could and i would probably do that even before i got myself on the road with a van um that is what i would do differently there's not much else i could say i would have bought a different van i would have done this i would have done that but at the end of the day you buy your van you pay your money you take your choice would i get another one of these sits and realize Possibly not, but it's been okay. It's just that there's certain things about it that I think other vans do better. And I rushed a bit when I bought this. At the time, it was really difficult to get a van. Um, there was no new ones available whatsoever. There was like, you know, three, four, five month waiting list. I couldn't even get a brand new Citroen Relay. You know, I had to get a pre-owned one with low mileage, but no, that's what I do different. I prepare myself a little bit better by networking a bit more. Now, last question is Lulu3625. Is it worth doing two days a week in a van? Or is it the app insurance and fuel too expensive? Right, Lulu3625. No, I don't think so. I don't think it's worth doing part-time if you are supplying your own van insurance and paying for the CX. 
It might be worth doing part-time if you're driving for somebody else. But no. If you've got to pay out to buy a van, lease a van, rent a van, whichever way you cut it. And then you've got to buy the CX, which I believe now is close to £2,000 per annum. And then, you know, you've got to get the insurance, a couple of grand a year, even on a small van. And then, obviously, fuel fuel is kind of pay as you go, isn't it, really? No, I don't see how he could make it pay. I don't. I mean, even if you did, you know, two days a week and had two really good days and did £300 a day, that's 600 quid. By the time you're taking your running costs out of that, and for the amount of hours you'd have to do to get that money if it was a small van, I don't see how it could pay whatsoever. If you're going to do part-time, I would suggest you get a part-time job as a driver, you know. I'm sure out there, there are people who might fancy the idea of cutting down the hours that they're doing and adding someone onto their insurance to drive for them and pay them a wage out of it. You know, you know, it's something that I might consider in a few years' time when I want to cut down on my hours. But I certainly don't believe, and, I'll, and if I'm, you know, if anyone's got a different opinion, please put it out that it's worth doing part-time. Sorry, not in my opinion, not at all. So that's the questions that I've that I've, I've picked out. There's quite a lot of questions that I had, and some of them are kind of the same kind of questions. How much can I earn? All that kind of stuff, and which I've answered before, and there's always the same answer. What you earn is very much down to you. Um, and there's no point in repeating those things. I hope that you found those questions and answers useful. And I also hope that if they're not, if you think there's additional information, you'll be kind enough to put it in the comments. This will help the people who've answered these questions and maybe people who are just simply watching the channel. That's it for me this week. Uh, it's Thursday. I won't be doing another video now, but this probably won't come out till Friday anyway, which is the day I normally put things out. Everybody have a great weekend. Thank you for watching my channel. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. And if you're not already subscribed, why haven't you subscribed? What's your excuse? It doesn't cost anything. Just subscribe, please. Get my numbers up. James has overtaken me and he's gone into the distance. Yes, I know he puts more videos out than me. And he's a shipper too. And he edits it far better than I do. But... It's still sad to see him zooming off in the distance like that. So I'd appreciate your help. Get me subscribers up. Let me catch him up again. It's worth a try, isn't it? And give us a thumbs up if you like the videos that I put out. Doing a thumbs up simply helps the videos go out and helps people hopefully enjoy them. Or get us, if they don't enjoy it, get some um, information out of it. Those of you who try, uh, who, uh, let me just wash my mouth out, who subscribe to my music channel the anvilliers thank you i've had some new subscribers last week for my appeal so thank you very much and that is most appreciated have a great time everybody and i'll see you soon